Coach Gundy with us now, and let's start with signing day, some general thoughts. Well, signing day is a good day. Uh, you get recruiting out of the way. It's uh, a time when we, uh, we, f we finalize spending 12 months on guys, on young men now. So uh, it's interesting with all the transfers and the, the way that we handle things now. Um, you hit the spot you need on signing day, and then if you end up not getting something you think you need later in the year, then you start looking across the country for transfers. So it's, it's much different than ever before, but we have a really, really good group of quality young men that fit into our culture uh, that we're really excited about. Um, put them in the program, start to develop their bodies, start to develop their minds in our culture at Oklahoma State. Um, but it's always good to get it over with. It's a long haul. This season would appear to have certainly been a transition year. Changes on offense, changes on defense, and a lot of new starters. So given all of that, how did this thing go in the regular season in your mind? Was it about what you expected? Was it better, not quite as good? I mean, how do you see it now that you've pulled back from it, had a chance to look at it? Well, when you, when you look at the games that we lost um, early in the year when, when we played Texas and lost, they beat us. They were, they were a pretty good football team, uh, and they beat us at that time. We made a couple of mistakes, but you can't look back and say that we should have won that game. Um, we didn't play well at all against Tech. Um, turned the ball over continuously, didn't give ourselves a chance. That's, those are the games that really bother you as a coach because we just didn't play well. We came home against, uh, against Baylor. Uh, we were ahead by, what, 10 uh, at the end of the third quarter or something, somewhere in the third quarter. Turned the ball over. Uh, they're a good, t good football team um, and came back and made some plays, but certainly could have had a chance to win that game. And then in the end, Oklahoma beat us. They, they, uh, I felt like they coached better than we did down in the score zone on both sides of the football. Uh, they made plays. We turned the ball over. They didn't. But overall, we, uh, we had some adjustments on offense with a new quarterback and a new coordinator. Um, we've made some changes on defense. Um, that's helped us as the season's gone on. Um, I'm excited about next year on defense because I think in the offseason we can really settle in what we want to do on defense for the first time in a few years based on the league and based on a new coordinator. Uh, and we have a lot of players coming back. Yeah. So it's exciting, uh, but we're looking forward to the bowl. Uh, we've had great practices. Uh, but when you look at back at the season, um, the guys played hard, uh, competed. Uh, we made some adjustments. Uh, we did a good job of coaching other than really two games. Uh, so we'll try to be better next year. But in the, in the big picture, it's pretty successful. So if you don't mind, let's kind of rewind mentally to August 10th. Thinking back to where things were then compared to where they are now, what is something that maybe has turned out a lot better than you ever thought it would? Just thinking about where you were, you know, week and a half into preseason. Well, our goal last year was to become a more disciplined team and we are a more disciplined team by far. Our penalties have been reduced greatly. Um, our non-combative penalties um, were almost gone. Um, defensively, we minimized big plays, which is a good thing. Um, Turnover-wise, we were either really good or not good. There's a two or three games we weren't good at all, and the rest of the season we were really good. And, and that's why we had the success we had at that particular time. So. Things that we said we wanted to improve on, we did, which is a good thing from a coaching staff. Chuba Hubbard obviously has got a decision to make. So, and you've been down this road before. So when it comes to pros and cons of going professional, staying here, what things, how do you process that? And how do you feel about that? What are the pros and cons and, and what's your view on it? Chuba's got to make a decision based on him and his family. It's, it's so different now than it even was three years ago with the input that these young men get from outside sources. Um, Rob Glass does a good job of collecting information for our players and give them quality information. Um, the families have to sit down and make a decision they think is best. Um, and we support that. Uh, I have my opinion on a lot of different things, uh, but each family is different. Uh, Chuba's a, a little bit different exception from the standpoint, he's only played in 14 games in his career. Um, he's probably 10 or 12 games from maybe elevating himself into the latter part of the first round or second round pick, which is three times the money as a fourth round pick. But he has to make the decision that that's what he wants to do. 
Um, we can't make that decision for them. So everybody's different uh, as coaches. We're just thankful that we have players that are that good. And then they have to make decisions what they think are best for them and their family. You've made the comment that your Texas Bowl opponent, Texas A&M, may be one of the best seven and five teams in recent history. Why do you say that? Well, they lost to three number ones. They lost to Georgia, which is, uh, I think, number four then. I don't know what Georgia was at that time. And then they lost to uh, an 11 or 12 team, I think, which is Auburn. Uh, Auburn just uh, beat up on Alabama a week ago or two weeks ago, whenever it was. So um, they're, a, they're a good football team. Um, there's not any chance they could be ranked in the top 25 with five losses, but they're certainly a top 25 team. Um, they, they've recruited well. Their coaches know, understand. They get it. They know what they're doing. But when you lose to 1-1-1-4-12, one, 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 uh, it's, it's going to be difficult to win a lot of games. So this is a really quality opponent for us. Um, should be a good football game. Uh, should be a, a game that people want to see and watch on television. And they'll have a lot of fans there, obviously, that's right down the road from them. I'm, I'm going to guess that 75% of them are going to be A&M. But I, I would also think the house will be full which makes for a good bowl game atmosphere. Schematically, matchup-wise, good, bad, your observations on that? Well, they're going to they're gonna pressure, keep an extra man in the box, and play man on defense. And then offensively, Jimbo's doing the same thing now that he's did it, done at Florida State years ago. Um, they're, they're doing a lot of the bunch packages and run the football, a lot of crossing routes and pick plays and things like that. When you watch their offense, it's, you can kind of tell what they do at times to their defense in spring and summer because of the routes they run and things like that. So he's doing the same stuff he's done on offense for 10 years. It's a Texas Bowl coming up on December 27th in Houston. Coming up, we'll talk Cowboy basketball with OSU head coach Mike Boynton. ADM milling is really a part of the fabric of the Enid community. So if we were to have lost them, it would have been more than the 70 jobs that they employ. OG&E, the city of Enid, and the Enid Regional Development Alliance were all great to work with. Not only does it allow for the growth of the new mill, but also the power is there to make that happen for the future. .net slash Cowboys Ortho. Ah, uh, now that's crisp. Crisp taste. Brewed with no corn syrup. Bud Light. Head basketball coach Mike Boynton joins us now. And, you know, obviously Isaac Likely has been out for a while, but you went on the road at Houston coming off two tough losses and one. What's the long-term value of that? What do you gain from that? Well, in a lot of ways, it gives, it gives our team a different uh, understanding of how we can still have success in spite of some unfortunate circumstances. Uh, we had to deal with a little adversity. We all had to make an adjustment. It took us some time to figure out how we needed to play without ice and you know, what units or groups of people could work best together without him being such a dominant leader on the court. And I think we're able to find some things out in that game that gives us a chance to continue to build on it. One of those role identifications, if you will, that has transpired since Likely's been out, D. Mitchell started, played 15 minutes without a turnover in the Houston game. What can his role be on this team, not just now, but maybe long-term into conference play? That's huge. I mean, D joined us, as everybody knows, as a walk-on last year amid some adversity and took a while to learn our system. But he's always been a tremendously hardworking kid who was about the right things and wanted to help us win however he could. And has never complained whether he played five minutes or 15 the other day or if he didn't get it at all. And just him understanding what we need at the position. Not that he has to come in and replace ice and try to get 15, 5, and 5, but to just steady the ship. Make sure we get Lindy shots where we need to. Make sure we get Thomas shots where we need to. Keep our defense intact and not take too many chances. And he helped us tremendously in that Houston game. 
Obviously, without Isaac, likely things have changed, and he's been out roughly three weeks. But as you think about what's transpired the first month and a half of the season, what have you learned about this team that maybe you didn't know when the season started? Well, they have tremendous, like, will. You know, this is a team that doesn't give in very easily. And we obviously don't win them all, but I think these kids play unbelievably hard most every night. They play unselfishly. They really enjoy each other. And this is a team that I can truly say winning is the only thing that matters to them. we got some guys who probably still aren't playing as much as they want to or hope to have at this point, but there's no pouting in our locker room. There's no finger pointing. Guys just want to continue to try to help us win. What's the usual progression for freshmen? You have a bunch of them, and they've played minutes, but how do you see that taking shape as we go into conference play, the freshmen in their roles? Well, this next four weeks is critical. You know, this semester break that we have where there's no classes to worry about, no study hall. It's just basketball for a full four-week period. So it's a great opportunity to kind of clear their minds and just focus on what they're really here to enjoy, which is the game. And in that process, they have to get better. They got to continue to get stronger, continue to learn our offensive and defensive schemes. And a lot of the really good teams that I've been around have taken great advantage of this three to four week period where we can just focus on just improving as a basketball team. And whether it means adding something that we want to use in conference play or making something better or taking something out, it's a great opportunity for adjustment. You'll face Minnesota and Tulsa, your next game at the BOK Center. A lot of excitement around playing in Tulsa, but Minnesota's an interesting team. They've got five losses, but they just beat the then number three team in the country by 12 points. So what do you make of the Gophers? They're a really good team. Uh, they have a tremendous center, Daniel Turo, who, um, similar to our, our big guy, Yor, who's a tremendous shot blocker, uh, but a guy who also can score, has developed his game tremendously since he, from a year ago when we played them. Um, but they also have a guard who we faced before, and Marcus Carr, who transferred from Pittsburgh, who's a dynamic b ball, um, kind of a scoring first guard. Uh, and they've got two pretty good shooters. Richard Patino does a really good job, and I expect it to be a, a hard-fought co contest again. I hope all the Cowboy fans that show up in their orange in Tulsa and cheer us on. Yeah, what's the value of playing in Tulsa? Well, it gives us a semi-home game, right? It's a neutral court. We don't play there. We've never played there. Uh, but it gives us a chance against another power conference team away from home to prove that we're capable of having success in these type games, which all the NCAA tournament games are similar to. We'll hear from Coach Jim Littell when we return. Oh! The end of the practice is when we do all of our intensity drills. She was going at yeah. it. Stop. Ah! Right there, there we yeah, go. If we win, this is yeah. the one way to get to the playoffs. I know! I Taste. Brewed with no corn syrup. Bud Light. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Coach. We turn our attention now to women's basketball and Coach Jim Littell. And Coach, coming off a win over Southern. And before we talk specifically about the game, it's the first time you've been in Gallagher since November 23rd. It's the first time you played as since finals. So it was good to be back at home, and it was certainly good just to be back on the floor. Absolutely. It's uh, it seemed like uh, forever since we've been at home. And we're uh, getting ready to start a five game homestand and uh, it's good to be back and sleep in your own bed and, and get on the practice floor and, and uh, get to work for conference play. We talked about that in the pregame, but the fact you guys didn't have any practices, uh, you were only game preparing or traveling or mandatory days off for an eight day stretch. So the finals week, while is interrupted by finals, and that's appropriately where the kids need to be, their focus needs to be. There's also a stretch in there. We can really start working on some fundamentals and some other things to prepare you for the conference season. I told our players last night, this is fun time to be a collegiate player because you have no class. You can, uh, you can spend, have some free time on your own, but you can also lock in on your game, get in the game, our gym and work on your individual game. Uh, just totally focus 
on basketball for the next two or three weeks. Maybe a little bit of that rust that we're, we're talking about and getting on the floor showed up against Southern, but it was still a good solid win. They were able to hit some threes on you, but beyond that, certainly defensively, I mean, if they didn't have their threes, they, they, they weren't going to score very many points. No, uh, you could tell that we hadn't played in 10 days. Uh, uh, we turned the ball over more than uh, we had been turning it over, didn't have some good possessions, and didn't close out on shooters very well when we gave up 11 threes. But uh, uh, to get a win and move on and, and prepare for Oral Roberts and, and uh, then Duquesne and then get ready for conference play, it was important for us to play. Coach, you had 42 points in the paint, and I know points in the paint don't come easy once you get against bigger teams, certainly against conference teams. But against a team like Southern, it should be inside out. You should get to the paint, you should score, and you should get to the free throw line, and those things were happening. We want to play the game that way every night, Casey, and uh, uh, I just think that uh, enhances your shot selection. It uh, gives you a chance to do a better job on the offensive boards, and that happened last night. We, we had uh, 42 points in the paint, 22 second chance points, and 21 offensive rebounds. So that's always a big part of what the Cowgirls basketball is about. Cowgirls went to 7-3 and three with a 72-59 victory over Southern. And Coach, we're in the midst now, that dry spell of being at home, as we talked about now, a five-game stretch, an important stretch for you guys. And the next biggest game, because it is the next game, is obviously ORU. ORU is going to come in here and play well. Uh, uh, they've got some Oklahoma kids on the roster that this game is going to be very important to them, as it should be to us. And uh, they're very good offensively. Uh, they've lost some depth. Uh, they're playing about a seven-person rotation, but their starting five is really talented and can really score the basketball. Seven o'clock, Gallagher Iva Arena. The Cowgirls will be hosting ORU. Hopefully, we'll see you guys at the arena. For the guys on the men's side and Coach Jim Littell, I'm Casey Kendrick. We'll see you guys next time right here on the OSU Roundup.